Hello, my name is Joe Hedrick of Imagine It Technologies, and today we're going to look at various ways of importing survey data into Civil 3D. Here inside of Civil 3D, we can get to the survey import commands from the simple import survey data command located from the home tab of the ribbon. Upon launching this command, we get a wizard, which really means the product's going to ask us for a little bit of information, then we click next and it asks for a little bit more. The very first screen is asking us to select the survey database. The survey database is going to be the container that holds all of the observation data, that is the instrument heights, the setups, the angles, the distances, the vertical angles, the descriptions. All of this information is stored inside of the survey database. The very first thing we'll want to do is create one for this project. Once we have our database created, the next thing we need to do is take a look at the settings. This is very important because out of the box, Civil 3D will default to international feet. Now, unfortunately in the United States, this typically is not what we want. So we could come in and set either US survey feet or I could go through and give my survey database a coordinate system. Now that that's set, I'm ready to move on and pick the data source. Now, historically, Autodesk products have imported uh, survey data via a format called a fieldbook file. Civil 3D can absolutely take advantage of the fieldbook file format, as well as being able to import land XML files, regular point files, or even points that might just exist in the drawing. We're going to run through this a couple of different ways with fillbook file being the first way. I'm going to go through, I'm going to pick my file, and then hit next. This part of the import wizard, Civil 3D is asking me for a survey network. Now, different companies, different individuals will use the network concept a little bit differently. However, at the end of the day, survey networks are way to group like bits of survey collection together. Here's a couple of examples. Some people I know will, if they're collecting a topo, they will go through, establish all their control, collect the traverse, bring that back to the office, adjust it, and then go back and pick up the actual topography based on the adjusted coordinates of the traverse. In this scenario, we could create a network for the control and a separate network for the actual topo collection. Other companies I know will spend multiple days on a particular job. Well, in this scenario, we could have a network for day one, a network for day two, a network for day three. Another example is if there's multiple crews collecting on the same site. In this case, we could have a network for Party Chief 1, a network for Party Chief 2, and so on down the line. So hopefully you're starting to get the idea of what survey networks are, but really they're just a way to collect, or not collect, but to group like bits of survey data. In my case, I have data that's been collected in two different means. Uh, the first bit of data that we're going to import was created and collected by a reflectorless total station. In just a little bit, we'll import data that was collected with an RTK GPS system. We'll create a separate network for that. So now I've got my network created. The very last step is really just to go through, take a look at the import options, make sure that I've got the appropriate figure prefix database, the appropriate line work code set selected, uh, you know, check boxes if I want to insert the survey networks, if I want to insert the survey points and, and so forth. But really, this is it. We can see because it's a fieldbook file, I am able to actually kind of see how the uh, the data was collected by evidence kind of as the little man running running across the screen there. And then, you know, at the end of the day, we see my, my project, uh, the results of that particular fieldbook file. Uh, the cyan line is my traverse, uh, the magenta line is a building, we've got some uh, yellow curb work, and we'll see some trees. 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to run through the exact same command, only we're going to import uh, the GPS data. Because I have you know, my survey database already set, I don't need to create another one of those. However, now I can specify just purely the data is going to be a point file. And it's going to ask me to pick that point file. I mean, here, if we open this up and, and take a look at it, you can see that it's absolutely nothing special, just point number, northing, easting, elevation, and description data. So with that information set, we need to go through and select what format it's in. And then down below at the bottom of this dialog box, we get a real-time preview of this file based on the format that we selected. This is really handy to make sure that we're importing you know, the right information and we have the right uh, file format set. Moving on, it's going to ask us again to create a network. So this is my GPS data, so I'm going to give it a network name GPS. Finally, you know, pretty similar options. Again, making sure that we get the right uh, figure prefix, the right line work code set, do we want to import the points, uh, and so on. We hit finish, and in just a second, it's going to bring the points in, and it's going to generate the figures or the line work between them. So now we see it a lot more. The picture completes itself. All of, you know, really the information kind of in the the southeast corner, that entire road, all the curb work uh, comes into the picture and all of this was collected really uh, by that GPS unit and imported into Civil 3D with, you know, simply just using the P and EZD format. Thank you for spending the last few minutes learning about some aspects of the survey tools within Civil 3D. For more information, please visit imagineit.com or call 800-356-9050.